Rub up your engines! Mark Twain says, Scotty, what do you think about Elon Musk firing 7% of Tesla's workforce? I've said something about electric cars before, and uh, I'll say it again. You know, it may be the future, but I just read an article in a mechanics magazine that talks about all kinds of mechanical and also social issues with cars, and they claimed that their source said 7% of the cars in the United States will be electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles by the year 2030. Okay, so we're talking a long time from now, and it's still only going to be 7%. As people found out with this Model 3, had a lot of problems making them, starting to mass produce stuff for quality, and he claimed it was going to be a $35,000 car. Well, they were really $45,000 up, and now he wants to make them for 35. Well, I think that firing 7% of your workforce, what's that going to do to quality and making more of them just because he wants to get the price down? It uh, doesn't look like a good thing to me, you know, because he's got to think of one main thing, and that's these electric vehicles. The Chinese are starting to make them. Hey, they're going to undercut his price. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And the thing about the Chinese factories are they're modern just like his. So a lot of their cars are all made by robots, and they can have good quality electric cars coming from China. And he's going to be competing with those guys. So, you know, he's trying to cut his workforce in order to make them cheaper. I don't think that's such a smart idea myself. Wish Kachil, and he says, Scotty, what do you think about ConsumerReport.com putting Audi, Mercedes, and BMW above Toyota and Honda in terms of reliability and quality. Somebody must be getting paid off. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes. But to give you an idea, I go all over the place meeting all kinds of people. And I've met people that work for these magazines and internet stuff that supposedly rate things. Well, you know, they don't get paid very much money for what they're doing. I met a guy who worked for one of those uh, consumer magazines. I said, what'd you get paid? And he said, I get $1,000 an article. I said, so if you do one a month, that's $12,000 a year. That's not very much money. He said, no, there's not much money in those. So I really wouldn't believe half of the stuff that those people do. They spend so much money money marketing things who's to say what money goes where I have no idea where it actually goes or what technicalities like if they say reliability what do they do a test of the first five seconds of ownership or something I mean who knows you could slant anything you want I wouldn't believe any of that nonsense listen to people like me who know what they're talking about cars or your neighbors who own a Toyota or a Honda versus ones that have a Mercedes and it's always gone in the shop. So be real about that stuff. Don't really, don't believe a lot of stuff you see on the internet or read these days, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's getting to be kind of ridiculous. Fresh 55 NE says it's a 2000 Jaguar X type, a good reliable car, 148,000 miles. No. <laughs> Those things are endless money pits. They're cool looking cars. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the way they look. They're beautiful cars. When they're running, they ride great. But they're also endless money pits. Now, it was Jaguar. Then Ford bought them. Ford was losing so much money, they sold them. And now Tata, that Indian company that makes those, you know, whatever they are, they own them now. They're not good cars. I mean, they look nice and everything. They're not reliable and they're money pits. They'll just eat up your wallet as you drive down the road. That's why, take a look at the price of a new Jag. Then look at one when it's six, eight years old. Hooey! I mean, if somebody pays sixty-five grand for a new one, when they're five, six years old, they generally go for less than twenty. When they're ten years old, you can pick them up all day long for you know three, four, five thousand dollars. But he wants them because they cost too much money to maintain. When <laughs> says Scotty, I'm in the market for a used Toyota Tacoma pickup, but they're very expensive. The Frontiers seem a lot cheaper. Are they good alternatives? If so, what years? Pre two thousand, when Renault took over from Nissan. Those Frontiers are decent pickup trucks. They're okay pickup trucks now, especially if they have a standard transmission. But if they have an automatic transmission in their post-2000, I wouldn't buy a Frontier. They're little bitty pickup trucks. Toyotas hold their value too long. Really? If you can't find a good Tacoma, look at the Ford Rangers. Their four-cylinder ones are pretty decent vehicles. Nothing wrong with them. You could get a Ford Ranger, especially if it was a standard transmission used pickup. They're decent used pickup trucks. I got a lot of customers with them, and they're totally happy with them. I think that instead. I'd do that before I'd get a Nissan. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.